Hi, here's my review of the Brother 1034D Overlocker. If you'd like more information, just click on the link below and that will take you to a full written review on my website. So my Brother 1034D has just arrived in the career this morning. I'm going to unpack it, set it up and write a review. Um, I bought this, I do have a commercial overlocker, Serger, um, which has done me very well for many years, but I thought I'd heard such good reviews about this machine, I thought I'd buy one as a backup. I bought it off Amazon, it cost me 107, let me have a look, 187.49 US dollars plus postage. Now I'm based in New Zealand so um, there was a warning saying don't use this with a power converter. This is designed for US power not European or New Zealand Australia power so um, if it blows up I'm taking that um, as my loss. So let's unpack this and see what we've right. got. Let's have a look in here. I've heard that the CD isn't that great that comes with it, but uh, I'll have a look and see how I go. What have we got? So we've got some manuals. Oh, and I thought this would be quite handy. This is a trim tray. Most um, domestic overlockers uh, don't have a thread catcher. Um, Commercial ones, of course, have a chute, and you could just fire that straight into a rubbish bin or a box. Oh, this is nice. It comes already set up, ready to go. That's handy. Color-coded, which will help to uh, set it up. Oh, and it's already been pre-tested. Excellent. Alright. Now, the other thing I did want to use this machine for is flat lock. Um, I think you have to purchase an additional attachment for that. But uh, we'll have a look in here in a minute and see what we've got. I'll just get this out of the box and see. Oh, another thing I've just noticed this is brilliant. Look at this. On each of the dial, it tells you which of the threads it's for. Oh, that's clever. That's a really good little feature. Okay. That's handy to have the colour coded sample ready to go. Okay. Right, to get this out of the box. They got it out of the box. Um, handy handle area here. It's actually heavier than I imagined it to be. It's quite a solid little piece of equipment. Um, right. Let's unpack all the bits and pieces and see what we've got. Those feet are for an LG foot and uh, some spare needles, which I believe are straight sewing machine universal needles. And they're oh, they say they're two eighties and two nineties, so pretty much what you're going to need every day. And a cleaning brush, oh, and a uh, Allen key, 
Oh, and if you're not aware with needles, um, the smaller the number, the lighter the fabric. Now, as a standard, I work with 80s for most days, and I use ball heads. There's lots of details on this in my website, but you tend to use an 80 or a 90 for the majority of your projects. 80 if they're an average weight fabric, 90 if they're slightly heavier, and you use a ball head because it doesn't cut the fibres of the fabric. So what can happen with an overlocker or even a sewing machine is if you don't use a ball head and you're using a knit fabric, it can pierce the fibres which will result in a ladder or a run in the final project. So uh, yeah, try and use an 80 ball head in your machine most days. Right, let's get this machine set up. Actually I suppose I should open the instruction packet for as most people say instructions, I don't need instructions, but uh, always handy to have. So we have a CD, we have two CDs. Won't worry about those for now. Um, warning information, warranty information. We've got here extra to the manual. We have a handbook. I'll have a quick look through that. And uh, this accessory order form. Okay. So you can get a blind stitch foot, an elastic foot, a pearl and sequin foot. Oh, okay, a piping foot, extra knives, light bulb, trim trap, and a gathering foot. Okay. Suture techniques. Okay. Well, I'll have a quick flip through these and then I'll set the machine up. Right, so I've just opened the uh, manual up and had a quick read. So this foot here is the blind stitch foot and this foot here that came with this is the gathering foot. Um, right, so I've just noticed that the manual says you must always thread upper looper, lower looper, left needle, right needle. So this is the same whether you're using on a domestic or a commercial machine, it's always the same, it's this one, this one, this one, this one. Or if you're just using one of these, you do this, this, and then whichever one of these two you use here. Now, do you use four threads or three threads? If you are sewing a knit garment and you want to secure the seam, you throw sew with four threads. If you are simply using the overlocker to tidy up a woven garment, you use three threads. You can either use these two with this one if you want a wider overlocker stitch, or you can use these two with this one if you want a narrower overlocker stitch. So it's generally it's up to you. When we sew knits, we tend to sew with a four thread. When we sew wovens, we're basically just tidying the seam and we use a three thread. So I haven't read up on how to set this up yet, but let's just uh, it's a trim trap. So, yeah, sits in reasonably securely. Get rid of this. Okay, I'm going to re-thread it straight away with some cops of thread. So let's just uh, tie these on one at a time. Naughty puppy chewed this thread and I was bringing it here in the car so I'm going to use that for my left needle because if it breaks it'll be nice and easy to uh, repair. So I'm just following the standard right over left, left over right to tie on these threads here and then we'll, I'll make sure they're all secured and then we'll pull them through. So this um, sample stitch thread I'm going to keep in a safe place. I've also marked on it the order which is yellow, red, green, blue. It came threaded with different coloured thread spools and the sample's really handy because it shows you which thread does which function so if you ever need to adjust any of the tensions um, it gives you a really good idea. Right, well, I do want to pull these threads through, so uh, there should be a lift lever somewhere to lift this up. 
which of course was the most obvious thing, should have guessed that through. Generally when you're pulling through you need to get into underneath, so I'm guessing that that's the mechanism, yes, but we just take the trim trap away to get into it, so there we go. Okay, so there's a very nice threading diagram here. Um, what I'm going to do is just pull that thread through, no, we're going to have to release these. I'm going to release that mechanism, oh yes, there we go, pull that through. How am I going to do this easily? Does that release the whole thing? No, it only temporarily releases it. Right, let's pull all these out. Can you tell I have not read the manual? I am just following my nose, as they say. Actually, I don't really need to worry about that for the time being. So, the green and the blue are running smooth. Actually, we do. We'll release these ones as well. The yeah. So I'm just releasing the tensions to allow this to pull through. Not sure whether this is a good idea or not. It still feels really firm. I'll well, take the needle to the highest point, which is generally what you do. So you roll the um, hand wheel counterclockwise till you get to the highest point. Now in theory that should be releasing. And that's as tight as anything. Okay, so... <coughs> I'm finding this pull through really difficult so what I've done is I've chopped off the thread one and two and I'm just going to pull through first of all the green beautiful no worries and then I'm using my tweezers to find the blue it should be up here somewhere yep there's the blue and let's just pull through the blue I'm just releasing the tension discs and that won't pull through Let's release there, let's just try this. It's something a bit odd here, I have to say this is not off to a very good start. As far as I'm concerned, this should not be this hard. Oh my gosh, it's not okay. I'm going to have to read the manual because this is not as easy as it should be. Right, so I've had um, four goes now at threading this and each time it hasn't worked. Um, I'm thinking it's probably going to work now. So. The trick is with this, of course, you thread the green one first, and that's reasonably straightforward. You follow this green thread through, and it's through that loop there. That's fine. The blue one's got a bit of a trick to it, so the lower looper here comes down through the guides here. There's a little lever that you push to the side, and that's fine. I just thought that the thread popped around it. It doesn't. There's actually another little thread loop to the left of that. Once it threads through that, you slide this back so those arrows match up. Then you thread it through here, and then the thread must go underneath the first thread you did, the green, the green thread, this thread here. So once you've done that, then you can thread the upper loopers as well. And then before you plug it in and possibly run it and blunt the needles, it's a really good idea. Now this hand wheel turns counterclockwise so that's towards you it's just to run two or three rounds just to make sure that that's going to loop properly because you'll know after about four or five if you've done it wrong it will all start to knot the tensions will all go funny and you'll have a big mess here so before you plug it in and run it that's a really good idea just to make sure there's a chain here that looks like a correct chain the other thing you need to do is just make sure that those threads are underneath the thread guides here and that they're locked in properly here. Right, so I'm going to find my power converter and plug this in with the treadle and we will see how we go. And I will put the trim trap back in the side of the machine. I'll just snap in. It's a bit odd. doesn't seem to make a difference. That seems a bit strange there, that's a bit flimsy. It's a thin piece of plastic and it doesn't line up properly. Um, <coughs> push that to the right and let it slide back in. Trim that to go under like that. Okay. Right, to plug the foot control or the treadle, there is a three point pin here. Make sure that's slotted in correctly. Mm. 
and this treadle goes on the ground like this so to engage it you'll be pressing down with your toes I mentioned before that I um, <coughs> I'm in New Zealand which is uh, land of Lord of the <coughs> Rings and Hobbiton and all of that so this machine was purchased from American Amazon so I'm using a power converter now it said explicitly warning not covered under warranty so I'm doing this off my own bat if this doesn't work and it upsets the mechanical mechanisms I've just wasted a couple of hundred dollars um, I'm hoping the power converter would work because I've purchased another sewing machine based on the American market and it did so this is the plug I'm working with here and I'm just going to place it into my power converter and turn the machine on and uh, we'll see how we go right it's plugged in powers on there should be an on off switch at the side which there is here Okay, well, so far so good. I'm finding this trim tray very flimsy though. It's very odd. Um, very flimsy. It's probably handy to have rather than nothing, but it's very flimsy. Whereas the rest of the machine seems really solid. Okay, so this is some <coughs> fabric I have to work with. It's a knit, juicy stretch fabric. It's a very curly one. Um, I thought it would be a good one to try this out on. So we are going to lower the press of foot. This just lever seems in the wrong place, but I'm sure it's fine once I get used to it. Okay, um, here goes nothing. Okay, well, oh, it's starting to gather my fabric a bit. I'm not sure why that's happening. I've knocked, oh no it's coming right now, maybe it was just the way I was holding it, it seems to have gathered it a bit. Well the stitch looks nice and balanced, there's certainly no need of any adjustments there, so straight out of the box that works really well. Um, doesn't appear to be blowing up or <coughs> causing any electrical problems. Um, the converter's warm but it's not excessively hot, so so far so good, I'll just keep going. seems fine the trim tray is working well the stitch is I can't really fault that that's an absolutely perfect stitch on a very thin jersey or stretch knit fabric straight out of the box so um, what do I think about this brother 1034d let's see well I'm not impressed with this threading um, straight out of the box it should have been easier but now I've done it and I know what the tricks are, you know, they say hindsight's everything. I'm actually happy now, but now I know what I'm doing, you know, that's easy for anyone to say. Um, the machine itself is, is heavy, it's sturdy enough, it's probably the easiest, I'll just turn this off, it's probably the easiest overlocker I've ever worked with as far as threading that lower looper goes. That's, okay, I've had a few issues but in hindsight, the way this is set up, um, those loopers um, are the easiest to get to. My commercial um, overlocker is just an absolute misery to, lo um, to uh, thread those lower loopers. They're very difficult to get to. So as far as that's concerned, that's brilliant. This trim tray is very flimsy, very flimsy. And also this part here that comes off, I guess it's the free arm you'd call it, the back part's very small and narrow so it's a bit flimsy to snap in but all up I have to say it's actually a really good machine. Um, it's well thought through, these guides are very well labelled. I'm very impressed with this. <coughs> Excuse me. And the tension dials, easy to work with um, and uh, it comes with everything you need so I actually have to say I think it's a great machine. I do like Brothers. I think they're um, well made and they last well. Um, 
I did think that was going to be easier to get started on, but now it's going. I'll sew this garment together and uh, give you a shot of what I what I put together, and um, we'll see how we go from there. So there's three dials levers on the side of your machine. This is the differential feed. This is the stitch length, and this is the stitch width. Now, if you're following garment construction methods, this is set to five, five millimeters, which is 13 over. 64 of an inch. You will need to adjust this up to 6 because seam allowances are set at 6 millimeters or a quarter of an inch in the garment industry and that's the way I teach things. The stitch length you probably won't need to adjust because that's usually between 2.5 and, and 3 millimeters and you may depending on the fabric need to adjust the differential feed. Now the differential feed uh, operates because there's two sets of feed dogs underneath the presser foot. If it's set to one, both of the feed dogs operate at the same rate. So this way you can control whether the upper fabric feeds more or the lower fabric feeds more and that's what creates gathers in your fabric or alternatively if you have a fabric that puckers that can solve that issue too. And all the details of that are in the manual that comes with the machine. And another thing I found in the manual is it has a really good chart on which dials to adjust if your tension isn't working properly. So there's this page and another page. So that's another really nice feature for this. So I do have to say for an entry level overlocker it's not bad. So I'm going to go ahead now and uh, overlock a garment together and uh, see how this works on a full garment. So here is a knit or stretch dress sewn completely with the four thread function. I had no problems with the overlocker at all. What you do have to keep an eye on is the cutting blade. The cutting blade edge is not directly at the edge of the guideline. It's around about an eighth of an inch or three millimeters in. You can measure that if you need to, so you need to very carefully keep an eye on where that is. Once you're used to the cutting blade position, there's no problem. Uh, the other thing you have to be aware of, I found when you're feeding this fabric under the presser foot, if you're not careful it can catch on the end of it. The presser foot does feel quite long. You almost need to guide the fabric in and guide the fabric out as well. If you don't keep an eye on guiding the fabric out, especially with a stretch fabric, I was finding the overlocker was bunching the overlocking up and creating a gathering effect. So just keep an eye on that. Um, other than that, I had no problems at all with the four thread function. It worked beautifully. No specific gathering or puckering and it was nice and easy to handle. So in addition to sewing that full knit dress you've just seen with a 4 thread, I also used this overlocker as a 3 thread to sew this bomber jacket here. I wanted to see how the overlocker would handle sewing different weight fabrics together at the same time. So what we have here with this bomber jacket is a medium weight woven wool, an embroidered wool for the front and back. We have a very lightweight woven chiffon sleeve. And then we have a merino wool rib for the collar, neckband, the cuffs and the waistband. So let's discuss how the overlocker coped with these fabrics. For an entry level overlocker I have to say I'm really impressed with it. The body of the machine is nice and sturdy and it has a lot of really easy to thread features once you know how to thread it. So the benefit of hindsight is a good thing. Make sure you spend some time learning how to thread this accurately and you'll have no problems. The presser foot lever I did find to be rather light given the fact the body of the machine feels quite sturdy. And also you can take the um, face cover off or the, the uh, throat cover off so you can use this as a free arm effect for the cuffs. So this was really handy sewing the rib to the chiffon at the cuffs and I really like that feature but the back of the plate does feel really light. Another nice feature this machine has is that thread catcher. I love it. I think it's great. For an entry level overlocker this machine has a lot of really nice features on it. This free arm feature for sewing on cuffs is very handy. 
So if I was going to rate this machine out of five, I'd give it a solid four. It falls short of a four and a half just because of the lightness and the flimsy aspect to this machine. But certainly price value, it's a really good buy. And if you are looking for your first overlock, I would really recommend this machine. Thanks for watching and if you'd like to leave a comment below, I'll get back to you as soon as I can.